think the underlying thing being the silence of the good. I think it's the good that need to wake up and stand and be counted. Uh, our last speaker is going to bring a totally different perspective is Vivek Gilani. So over to you Vivek. Please do take your time. I know we are pushed for time, but you've got all the time. So don't worry about that. On the mic on? Okay, it is. Uh, I really enjoyed your presentation, uh, Vijay. I was actually fearing that, uh, you know, this, this environment is, is nice, but I was getting a little too tight with my muscles. It was a little too cold. And I thought uh, to start the movement of efficiency and transparency, we should start with making this place more energy efficient. So I've been asking people to raise the temperature of the, of the air conditioning here to loosen everybody up. Uh, I'd like to start with a couple of uh, jokes to just warm you all up, uh, because I myself need some warming up right now. <laughs> While I was listening to your presentation, Vijay, uh, I was wondering, you know, people who don't accept cash, do you have fifth pillar, the zero currency note available in credit card form as well? You know, for example, if I want to pay using credit card, would I be able to do that? Um, I, I, don't, I don't get your question. My, my question was, uh, there are people who say that I don't take cash. Oh, yeah. I wanted to know if uh, you plan to have a zero credit card option as well. Well, that's a good, uh, good thought. Uh, we can work on that. Right. Uh, that's one idea I had. And uh, you were wondering why we needed the first, the fifth pillar, when we already have four pillars. And I really do believe it's because the four pillars were constructed with faulty materials. The, the three pillars that are part of democracy, uh, judiciary, executive, and the legislature, uh, Mumbai Voice deals very intimately with that, and I'll talk to you all a little bit about that. But the fourth one, which was supposed to sort of fix the, the, the lack of balance, uh, even though three is enough for balance, the the media or the, the journalists have, I think, failed us as well. And I'll get into a little bit of uh, as to why we believe that we need to rectify even those first four pillars. And that is what Mumbai Votes is mostly about. And uh, one other thing I wanted to share was I liked the exchange between uh, Mr. Bhattacharya and, and Mr. Opera. You all met on a flight. Uh, I'm actually an environmental engineer, so I'm usually opposed to flying. Uh, but I found that this was one very good use of flying where you guys met with each other and started the seed of a movement which, uh, which has invited us all over here. So I do recommend flying when it leads to this kind of exchanges between people. <laughs> Even though I must say that if you were on a train, you would have had much more time to talk. It would have been a longer journey. So uh, <laughs> that's one other thought I wanted to share. Okay, so I'm going to start with, uh, if I can put this up a little higher. What are you flying? Talking to the next person, I know. <laughs> and that actually happens better on, uh, on flight. Uh, is this okay? Okay. Uh, can you hear me? Very well. Okay. So, I wanted to ask you all, instead of making a presentation right away, since this is something that is uh, very intimately connected with us, uh, the movement is called Mumbai Votes, and uh, forget about the Mumbai part, it can be any votes, it can be Kolkata votes, it can be Chennai votes, it can be any city votes. Uh, the root of this movement was essentially this. Uh, in 1998, when I became eligible to vote for the first time, I voted for Mr. Vajpayee, uh, and the reason I voted for him was because he was a good orator. He was a poet, he was somebody who was charismatic, and I didn't have any other information. And I actually felt I was voting for Mr. Vajpayee when I was actually voting for my local MP. My local MP probably doesn't even have Mr. Vajpayee's phone number. And in this democracy where we claim, and, and I need to defer a little bit about, you know, the, the numbers. India keeps talking about the numbers of our democracy, the numbers of people who follow something, or the fact that we are first X, Y, Z. I feel that, yes, we are the world's largest democracy, but frankly, I feel that we are the world's largest democracy because of bad family planning. Uh, we need to become an evolved democracy, and I felt in 1998 when I voted for the first time, I frankly felt disgusted by what I did. I went into the polling booth literally with a blindfold in my eyes, with a dart in my hand, and I went and threw it at the BJP symbol, wondering, walking out with my, with my, you know, me biting my fingernails, wondering if I voted for the right person. And here I was hearing India as the world's largest democracy, the most shining example of democracy around, and yet we vote with such vacuum of information. And I found that that was very, very disturbing. Nobody around me, my, fa my father, my teachers, my colleagues, nobody had any information about who are the people who are standing for election. And I felt that unless you fix that, unless you bring the information age into 
not politics but into public participation everything that we see around us is not going to end it's almost like imagine if you wanted to fix the pipes in your house and you just asked everybody around you who do you think i should get as a plumber and everybody around you just gives them gives you their, their opinion their gossip that they've heard from other people without actually providing you with any references of previous work done by that plumber this is exactly how we've been going and signing our contracts for 5 years with elected representatives in india without finding out what their performance has been and during elections i'm sure you will have noticed this that all our election campaigns are about the promises of one person versus the promises of another person whereas i feel it should be about the promises of that person versus the performance of that per- person and that has been the essence of what mumbai votes was when it started off so essentially what this movement is about is to usher in the age of informed participation in democracy in india so that elected representatives know that they're being constantly watched over by citizens thereby incentivizing progressive politics to begin with it seems like we are here to beat the politicians up to show them in bad lights to show how poor their performance is but eventually the idea is this that if they know that people are going to be looking at performance figures and actual on the ground results to decide the the political fate five years down the line they will change their performance i'll give you a live example of how this has actually uh, come into practice in mumbai where i'm from there was a local municipal councilor who had the opportunity to vote in the municipal council to bring in what is called the area development concept where instead of individual buildings in the area going for redevelopment there is a cluster developmental idea which needed councillors in mumbai to actually back it up there was this one particular area of mumbai called churni road where the municipal councillor felt that yes i can back this up it will be a great thing for the city but because i am the local councillor from congress party but my mla is from the bjp party what is going to happen is today i will vote for it the newspapers will report that mr xyz councillor has supported good developmental work but three years down the line when it's the mla's chance to campaign in the area he is going to take all the credit because all of you guys are going to forget that it was the councillor that actually worked for it and somebody else is usurping the credit so what happened was good developmental work comes into our public memory in our newspapers every couple of days and it just vanishes just like water flowing on a rock it just goes away and none of us remember who are the people with merit and who are the people without merit the entire movement began with this disturbing idea that every day this information comes to us but every day this information disappears and there is no public record i don't know if in kolkata you'll have this concept of raddi walas uh, these uh, these people who collect newspapers essentially this idea you all do have the idea essentially this whole movement began as an electronic raddi wala if i felt that on the day of the elections in the morning somebody rang my doorbell and said you know what i have collected newspaper clippings of every corporator mp mla that is standing for elections right now here it is in your hand flip through it spend a few minutes researching your mp mla corporator just like you would research the last cell phone that you bought i'm going to ask you all a very very frank question the last cell phone that you bought how many of you all went to a website such as compare india naptol.com or did some research as to the features of the electric rep- of the cell phone that you bought and compared it with the features of another cell phone that you bought i can bet that that time collectively put together for 5 years is greater than the amount of time you spent on researching the candidates who were standing for election in your city am i wrong i'm quite sure that that's exactly how we buy our shoes that's exactly how we buy holidays that's exactly how we actually go watch movies we read reviews from credible sources to make sure that what what we actually going in for has merit that was the birth of mumbai votes uh, i'd like to quickly show you a video which encapsulates the idea of voting blindly and and the evils that it leads to in our society if you all can just allow me to walk through Okay, I'll save these videos. They aren't here now. Oh, okay. Okay.
which I won't get into that then because I don't want to waste everybody's time with the are the videos loaded up okay ha ah, okay it's the uh, you can throw the throwing darts yeah These are very short videos, but they sort of encapsulate the idea of selection. Uh, there's another one there. The no, there's another one. It's this one. Yeah, second one. This one uh, is the is the one that I'd like you to focus on uh, in terms of selecting the person that you you actually vote for. Yeah, that's right. 